Welcome to GV247.TV, the Global Vision Channel. A non-profit web TV channel bringing biblical perspective to the world in which you live. Hello again, dear friends and family in Christ Jesus, and a very warm welcome to you from Scotland, which is bracing itself for Storm Arwen as we batten down the hatches and give thanks to God that we are able to do so in the midst of the turmoil outside in the world just as Jesus himself prophesied would be happening before his return, which we all look and long for. Now, I've only got a couple of minutes before we join this week's international discussion panel, where we will be discussing moral deception. And that one's quite a challenge for many of us, according to the Bible, so stay tuned to find out more. Meanwhile, the reality of what is happening out there hits hard when we see that International Christian Concern announced its 2021 Persecutor of the Year Awards a few days ago, when they released its detailed findings in a 140-page report on 24 of the world's worst oppressors of Christians. Nigeria earned their dubious award in the worst country category, the Taliban for worst entity, and North Korean Supreme Leader Kim Jong-un for the worst individual. Now, although we know that we have viewers around the world watching these programmes on our various platforms, there are very few from the nations of those named, but it certainly spurs us on to increased prayer for our persecuted brethren and that we ourselves may stand strong, as it has crept into the so-called first world countries over the last few years. Nobody's losing their life here so far, but many have lost their liberty, and we know that the Bible promises it will indeed wax worse. So this is the time to draw ever closer to God and his word, and yes, I know some of you will be fed up with me saying this incessantly, but it really is what this network is all about. We must be discipled, and no matter how old you are in the faith, it is never too late as many of the Zoom groups that we serve at can attest. So we're here for you. So drop us an email if you need help or information, and that's info at globalvision.tv. But meanwhile, let's go over to join this week's panel. Hello, and as always, welcome to this week's discussion panel. Before we pray, let's just all introduce ourselves. Who do we have? And on my right this week, Stuart, again. Hello again, and uh, looking forward to the meeting. Um, it's good to be here. Right, you didn't tell us anything about yourself, but there's plenty online. Look them up. Marjorie, how lovely to see you again. <laughs> Bless you. Yes, how lovely to be back again. It's uh, it's really a privilege to be on, the, on this discussion panel, and I do pray everybody uh, is helped and encouraged by what we bring to the table. I, I do hope so. That's lovely, Marjorie. And then below you have um, Gideon Levitam. Yes, Shalom. This is Gideon Levitam. Happy to be with you for this panel today. God bless you. God bless you too, Gideon. It almost looks like we're enjoying ourselves. Why don't be careful here? Anton, <laughs> Pastor Anton Bosch. Hello, my name is Anton Bosch and uh, I lead a church in uh, Los Angeles, California. And it's uh, great to be here today. Lovely to have you. And Steve, Steve Lloyd. Hi, oh, yes, uh, it's good to be with you again. I'm a pastor of a small church in the UK and uh, it's great to be back with you and uh, to be part of this panel. That's great. Lovely to see you, Steve. So let's open in prayer. Yeah. Father God, we do thank you and praise you that you are a God of, of love. Uh, and we, we thank you for what you have done for us. But Lord, we pray, as, especially as we think of these things today, that we would not take your love for granted, but that we would uh, love you in the way that you love us as best mm. as we can, Father. But Lord, just be with us now, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, last week we looked at ethical deception. And, um, you know, this came particularly with self-delusion where you profess the Lordship of Christ, but you could be stealing office stationery, uh, office supplies at work, looking lustfully at another person, or even hating somebody. But this week, we're going to look at moral deception. You might think that's just a little bit too similar to ethical, but there's a difference because the cornerstone of moral deception is secular humanism. If it feels good, do it. 
But the scriptures say in Matthew 4, 4, that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So we'll take a look at moral deception, how it works, how to avoid it. So let's just start with you, Stuart. Do you have a scripture for us this week? So I was thinking uh, about how the the Bible explains our spiritual condition and uh, therefore in turn the difficulties and challenges we face uh, in this physical world. So to lay it out, so to speak, uh, so we can understand. um, In Jeremiah 17.9, we're instructed that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? In Isaiah 53.6, we are informed that we, all like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. Now, in the New Testament, in Romans 3.23, the apostle Paul records, he puts it this way, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And in Proverbs 14.12, we read, there is a way that appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. So the antidote, are clear, uh, again, uh, we're given clear information here, clear guidance in John 14.6, when Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. And so... Uh, we repeat a verse that uh, was given last week uh, in Matthew 6, 33, where Jesus instructs, but first seek his kingdom and his righteousness and walk in the light of the truths that we learn. Thank you very much, Stuart. Um, who'd like to open up? Basically, when you're looking at moral deception, you're, you're looking at people who are following the world instead of following Jesus. And... Um, taking on board the way the world sees things and accepting them. And very often, my observation has been that people begin to uh, be sentimental. Okay, and so sentimentality is is often the first step on the slippery slope. Oh, but, you know, her husband was so horrible to her, you can't blame her for finding love with another man sentimentality and this leads people down the slope of moral deception and there is a secondary thing to it as well in that we must be careful what we are absorbing either through literature or the television or the movie theater because the minute we see people acting immorally and we we don't turn it off or throw the book away we actually becoming a participator in what they're doing. And we are also uh, have allowed ourselves to let that into our heart. And, uh, you know, Jeremiah, uh, he, he's marvelous. I really enjoy Jeremiah. I'm studying him at the moment. And Jeremiah 9, 6, he says that you live in a world of deception. In their deception, they refuse to know me. This is the Lord's declaration. Well, he's talking to Israel, but he does go on to say that the Lord will refine them. Why? Because he loves them. Because he loves them, they're his people. And so he will put them through the refining fire. But Lord Jesus, let us not go that far that we need to enter the fire of refining. Well said, Marjorie. That that, that was interesting. Um, Let's go to Anton and then we'll go to Steve after that. Moral deception, I think Marjorie touched on a very important point, and that is that um, we we are deceived into believing that something is acceptable or permissible, um, often because of the culture and the environment in which we find ourselves. And, and so the, the culture is changing very dramatically, very fast, and we are absorbing these things, and mm. we absorb them through observation and particularly through the television. And um, I, I, I have a television, and, uh, but we need to control what we, what we watch. Um, and the pro- because the problem is that, is that these things become uh, the norm. We say, well, it's, it's, that's just the way it is. Um, and and, and in, a, in a sense, when we watch these things, particularly when Christians watch reality shows, 
um, which obviously, you know, are not, are not reality shows at all. Um, we, we're, in a sense, approving of that because just by the fact that, that we are watching it pushes up the ratings. And in the end of the day, we are paying, even though not directly, we're paying indirectly through the advertising. Um, and so we, we're falling guilty of uh, Romans chapter one that, that speaks, speaks about the fact that uh, not only do the same, but also approve of those that practice them. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so we need to be we need to be a separate people. We need to be a holy people. And it needs to be a reality, not just in the sense of, uh, oh, no, I don't do this, I don't do that. But, but that there is an integrity within our hearts and our minds that we, are, we, we, we will not watch these things. We will not participate in them. We will not approve of them. Um, but we will, we will distance them and, and make sure that our hearts remain soft and pliable before the Lord, that we remain sensitive to the conviction that comes through the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Anton. Steve? My, my thoughts originally went back to what Satan said in the garden. Did God say? The, the doubt that is cast um, or, that we, or that we put in ourselves in, in terms of the fact that there's something there that we want to do. And so we start to challenge God's word in a different way, but, you know, and say, well, did, did God really say that or should we do something else? Um, and, and quite rightly, as far as, you know, watching films goes, for instance, I mean, I've, it, it would be very easy to watch a film where, you know, and the majority of films are like this nowadays, where they blaspheme. And, and again, like Anton says, do, if, we, if we sit and watch it, we then become participants in it. Mm -hmm. and, and so we have to um, make sure almost, if you like, we educate ourselves, one, to hear those things, and when we do hear them, to switch it off. Mm. Because it is important, because it is a slippery slope, like, you know, it's being said. And so, you know, when, when the devil used those words, did God say, mm. we've got to say it in a different way. Did God say that we should do this or keep away from it and, and know the scriptures? Those who know me well will know that this is actually something I... I take so seriously and often if I'm speaking at conferences and seminars, it comes up and um, it's uh, there's an accuser of the brethren, but the Holy Spirit and our conscience is the one who convicts us when we're doing something wrong. And I know, having been away from telly and soaps, the soap operas or whatever you want to call them for, for many, many years, I remember going to somebody's house. And it was a, like a seven o'clock soap that's on in the UK all the time. This was years ago as well. And somebody had kind of rushed in the front door, closed it behind them. And the whole idea was that they were running upstairs. It was lunchtime. And in their lunch hour, he was having, shall we just say, a liaison with somebody who was not his wife upstairs. And I cannot tell you how much this absolutely shocked me because I, I was clean, washed clean in the blood of Jesus. And I hadn't seen anything like that for a few years. And you're absolutely right, because you can get used to it. So here's what we do. Um, it's really difficult for us to find films or anything we can watch. So what we do is this. Um, you, you go to your phone and you put into Google the name of the film, and then you write Parents Guide. And sometimes Stuart and I really fancied a film. It looks like a good thriller. And I'll say, Stuart, you're not going to 54 F words, and I'm just saying that that's what it says, or a hundred and odds in that whole film. It's just appalling. It's now at the stage, I think we've watched every film we can, and before Marjorie pipes up with watching Christmas films and um, and um, who's the people that make the greetings cards? Um, oh, Hallmark. Hallmark, Hallmark Channel and all that, yeah. But if anybody can think of what their favourite, particularly for women, what the favourite film is, a series that was on television in the UK, it was taken all around the world. It begins with um, you have a big house in the background and the man walking his dog and everybody loved it. And I've watched it. I'm not I'm not being a hypocrite. <clears throat> the fact is the underlying lie that runs through all these series was to do with a homosexual affair. So it masquerades as something like a, love, a Jane Austen or a Bronte, you know, something that's fairly wholesome. 
And it's very, very interesting how easily we can be swayed. So my thing is, do not, if you don't ever brag that, oh, I don't go to the pub every night, I would never have an affair, I would never commit adultery or fornicate, and you watch that garbage, and garbage in equals garbage out, and I'm sorry if I sound forceful, um, I am not being super righteous, it's because I know the failings in my life and just ordinary people round about us. Um, so I'm going to go to Gideon next, who I'm sure has got something much more worthy to say. And then, uh, Stuart, if you come in after Gideon. Yes, I wanted to mention that uh, it is so easy uh, that things are creeping in, uh, that, uh, that's, that the devil is creeping, uh, uh, causing it to come in, whether it is in television or whether it is in various videos or various language uh, a radio show that we hear <clears throat> uh, what you just mentioned Deborah concerning the the homosexuality it's become almost like normal the way that it been presented in this in the uh, in the television show and on on the screen that it almost getting one uh, adapted to it as if it is common, it is part of the norm. But the Bible does, God uh, hates sin, he loves the sinner, but he hates sin, and and that that's only shows us how easily things are creeping in and it takes us to the next level, and to the next level, and we, we're accepting things. Uh, uh, so how can we get help? We need help from the Lord to be able to discern those things and to separate ourselves. Paul in 1 Corinthians 6 said once and again, he says, don't you know that you, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit of God? You are not your own. You've been bought with a price and he's reminding the believers. And so I'm, I would just want to say that this is an ongoing situation. It's, it's, it's not going to stop today because we make a so-called a commitment. It will, it's an ongoing challenge that we have to constantly make decisions as believers and trust that the Lord will help us to make the better decision. Amen, Gideon. And it's, it's what we were like speaking about earlier last week, I think it was, um, about, or about the conscience becoming seared. Um, and uh, it was really insidious how they did it in the UK, Gideon. Um, it was actually soap that Steve mentioned, and it used to be called Emmerdale Farm. It was about a farming community. Now, I didn't watch it or so on, but I, I follow what's happening in the media because of my work. But years and years and years ago, there, were, um, there was a, a lesbian kiss, okay? Shocking. Of course, the ratings, the programme ratings went sky high, everybody watching it. And that opened the door just a little bit until the next soap had something like that. And the next one, you're talking seven o'clock type uh, before the, the watershed so that children can see it. And therefore, it has now become normalised in our society. So that's the UK. I know Canada is just as bad. And then, of course, um, you've got the various states in America and South Africa. I don't know, they all have different rules. Sin has become normalised. And just as the Lord Jesus Christ says, even in the Olivet Discourse, about the love of many will grow cold because th th there are no holds barred. There's nothing wrong anymore. There, There is no... Um, no concept of sin. Stuart? I think what we have to be careful of is that you will, if you focus in on all the things that are bad, all the things that people shouldn't be looking at or reading, you will end up judging one another. And because there's nothing new under the sun, these things have been going on since the beginning. It's just our technology allows it to be in your living room. At the end of the day, what we need to be is born again of the Spirit of God. Otherwise, well, you don't even have to be born again. To It just depends how you've been brought up, whether you recognize something as morally wrong or not. And that just depends how you understand what is moral or ethical. It just depends on what culture you've been brought up in. But when I became a believer, and as I also became trained in the scriptures, and as the Lord revealed his truths to me, I began to feel 
ashamed, ashamed to see things or ashamed to take to, to, to watch some things or to take some things on board. Was that because of me? No, it was because of the Holy Spirit at work within us. Because I've seen how the cults operate, often you will have people coming to your door and the first thing they'll say to you is, do you have a television? Because they want to judge you. They want to be able to use these things to show you how you're not as holy as they are. And these are outward things. What I would say is that if you are watching something that's gratuitously violent or sexual or in some way is just, it is not good for you. If you cannot recognize that, then you really need to get close to God. You really need to spend time with him so that he will reveal to you that this is like a virus. And so that is why we must have the Holy Spirit at work in our lives. And if that is what is going on, we will understand uh, what is holiness r- rather than things that are out in the surface. Mm. Amen. And again, we come back to this because if you are continuously ignoring the prompting of the Holy Spirit and your conscience becomes seared, I think you could be left in a terrifying position. And of course, Stuart, you know, you mentioned about judgment at the beginning, of course, Nobody's judging anybody else. It really is to do with your own walk, isn't it? For each one of us to judge ourselves. Um, I I can't think where I've ever really pointed the finger at somebody and said, you shouldn't be doing this or that. Stuart, am I wrong? I have seen in some fellowships, particularly fellowships that tend to towards uh, perhaps the holiness movement, whereby you begin to get judged on the clothes you are wearing, your hairstyle. I mean, it, what happens is when people start to go down that road, people will judge one another for all manner of things. And it has nothing to do with walking upright before the Lord. And that, that's all I'm saying is, is you must be careful of that. You know, this is interesting. I was actually speaking about this with Anton a couple of days ago. Um, you know, we were talking about what are the essentials of the faith um, and therefore what, what's left, you know, is heresy as it were. And, um, you know, we're talking about the, the things that are not essential where people are judged. I say with women, for example, um, in some places you, you're, you're a Jezebel if you don't have your hair fully covered or if you were to wear trousers, for example. And, and there's all different things like that. Um and you're absolutely right. It, it actually becomes it can become cultish if that's what we're, you know, we're 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 basing these things on. Marjorie, what do you think? Stuart is quite right in that it can, it can, people can be become judgmental, uh, but there is usually a link between being judgmental and being self righteous. Mm-hmm. And uh, so there is a great warning once you see that people are becoming judgmental. You know they're not walking in grace because as saved sinners, we all identify as saved sinners. We're so grateful for the grace of God in our lives that we dare not start judging others. Mm-hmm. So I think that, um, but often when we're looking at these things, we can wonder, are we addressing the church or are we addressing unbelievers? Mm-hmm. Because you can't believe the things that they're watching, doing, and participating in. So we look at Philippians 3.18, for many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you weeping, that they are enemies of the cross. So my question is, are we weeping for these people? Paul was even weeping. Are we weeping? Because we are all sinners in need of grace. And it is only from that position of understanding we're all sinners in need of grace that we can minister to anybody. I have seen some of the biggest hypocrites and self-righteous people in particular denominations where they are quick to judge people on the outer appearance and they're probably going home. Um, we have the um, particular, the major denomination in Scotland have a, a great assembly every year in Edinburgh, a national assembly. And um, that is when the prostitutes are at their busiest time of the year. Now, this is a fact where they actually bring prostitutes in from other places into the city of Edinburgh. That's just an example of um 
I, I, and it's it's true. This is not gossip, but we know because we have people that that, that work with the prostitutes or did have a few years ago. Um, so listen, I'd just like to give the last word to Anton. We have to be careful, as Stuart said, of uh, an external um, holiness, just like the Pharisees. But also, I, be I believe that as Christians, we need to be careful of, of a negative um, approach to life. So I can't do this. I can't do that. I mustn't go here. I mustn't look there. Uh, what we have is a, is a glorious richness in the Lord Jesus Christ and in his word. And, and when these other things are more attractive to us, uh, maybe the problem really is that we, uh, our walk with the Lord is not right. And, and what we should really be focusing on more than saying, well, I can't do this, I mustn't go here, I must, uh, you know, all the don'ts, is, is really to get our walk with the Lord right, that we're, we're walking with him, we're, we're, with, we're enthralled with him. We, we have no desire for the, for the stuff of the world. Um, you know, if, if, you, if you have a, a Rolls Royce in the garage, you know, you, you don't want a Volkswagen. I mean, you know, what do you want to do with that? We, we, we have, we have the, the, the king of glory. We, we have his word. We have his spirit. And, and those are the things that should thrill us. Those are the things that should excite us. And when the world becomes attractive, it just means that, that, these, that, that, that the Lord is not where he ought to be. And so we need to be focusing more on what we, what we should be doing rather than on the mm. things that we ought not to be doing. Mm. And with that, I think we'll all see a big resounding amen. Amen. And, uh, Bye bye Amen. from all of us, and Amen. thank you all, panel. There was some excellent stuff in there, and I'm I'm really blessed hearing you. Bye bye, everybody. Bye -bye. We'll see you next time. Bye, bye bye. God bless. Bye -bye. This is GV247.tv, bringing biblical perspective to the world in which you live. A powerful free resource with hundreds of short films on a wide range of Bible topics from experts around the world, plus full-length sermons and programs for teaching and encouragement. Choose from current affairs, signs of the times, a chance to voice your own opinion, and special offers on our full-length feature films, documentaries and study materials. At over four hours in length, The Lamplight Project is a systematic 12-part Bible study series. A powerful teaching tool that begins with the origins of life and takes the viewer on a comprehensive journey packed with high-profile interviews, film, graphics and illustrations, concluding with the return of Christ and an encouragement to stand firm and be faithful. Complete with a free study guide download for both personal and group study, this powerful interactive guide connects to over a thousand programs with expert interviews on GV247.tv, our free service web TV channel. Does My Life Have Meaning? A powerful one-hour presentation produced from the Lamplight Project. With a free copy of the Gospel of Luke, This film is crammed with engaging interviews, film and graphics. A life-challenging film to those searching for answers. As distributors for the Jesus film, we offer this timeless movie based on Luke's Gospel. This clear presentation of the life of Jesus Christ has been viewed worldwide and translated into over 1,200 languages. We provide the film with a free copy of the Gospel of Luke. The Daniel Project is a popular TV documentary that presents an overview of Bible prophecy and an encouragement to read the signs of the times. Hailed as one of the best TV films to be made on the subject, DVD extras feature a heart-to-heart -heart interview about the way of rescue. Based loosely on the documentary, The Daniel Connection is a full-length feature film. This fictional thriller incorporates many of the themes promoted through pop culture and social media which affect people on a global scale. Launched at the Cannes Film Festival, The Daniel Connection points the ever-skeptical viewer to search the Bible for answers to life's deepest questions. We've been serving the body of Christ for over 30 years, and if you would like further information, Please do not hesitate to get in touch. <laughs>